Hello and welcome to the TES Secondary Maths Resource of the Week number 43 with me Craig Barton. Now as I talked about in last week's Resource of the Week video, myself and two other colleagues at school are currently rewriting our Year 9-11 to 11 schemes of learning and we've also decided to tweak our Year 7-8 to 8 schemes of learning as well. And I'm on a bit of a mission to utilise as many of the wonderful resources uploaded to Tes Maths as possible to help me write this scheme of learning. Now, one of the things I think is really important is that staff have access to a bank of resources that can be used at the drop of a hat to provide any students who finish a given set of work with some really rich, engaging, challenging extension material. And likewise, um, I know I've been in this position myself many a time, if a member of staff is teaching a lesson and they actually get to the end of what they've planned and they look at the watch and there's 10 minutes to go, can they have something up their sleeve that they can just bang up on the board and it will keep the kids occupied in a meaningful way for 10 minutes? So I was searching around Tez and I stumbled upon this resource which has been uploaded by one of my favourite resource uploaders and maths bloggers, um, Interactive Maths, and it's called Junior Maths Challenge Random Questions. Now, I imagine that many of you will have uh, used the UK Maths Challenge um, resources or perhaps your schools are signed up, signed up to them. I remember as a child myself, I used to absolutely love the UK Maths Challenges. I mean, I was a big geek back then, just, just as I am now. Um, and as a teacher, once I discovered that a load of these were online and ready to use, I've been using them loads with my students. But this resource is absolutely superb because what Interactive Maths, or uh, Dan Clark as he's, as he's otherwise known, has done, is he's assembled a wide selection of the uh, questions from the Junior Maths Challenge into a really handy PowerPoint. So if I just fire this up now, you'll see the PowerPoint looks like that. I'm just gonna full screen it and hopefully you'll still be able to see a fair bit of it on the video. If I pick, for example, a random easy style question, questions one to five, I get something like this. How many triangles of uh, any size are there in the diagram? Now you can imagine, uh, projecting that on, up onto the board for it and saying any students who finished I want, uh, want you to have a go at this and it doesn't matter that you might be teaching a lesson on sequences or fractions or data handling I'm all in favour of just chucking problem solving stuff at kids at, at any stage and what Dan's very kindly done as well is he's uh, used his, Excel, his PowerPoint skills to link to the answer and, and the, uh, the, the explanation for each one and then back to the menu we go and now we'll try maybe a normal style question one of the questions 6 to 15 and then we get to some pretty challenging stuff here so you can see how this works um, or we could just randomly generate a question or we can go for an absolute nightmare of a question and these are, there's some absolutely brilliant ones here and uh, look at that one there nice little bit of algebra for the, for the students to get their head around and those of you who aren't familiar with the UK Maths Challenge questions, they're absolutely brilliantly designed because none of these uh, wrong answers are redundant. They're not just chucked in there for, for any particular reason. If a child uh, has a misconception or goes down a particular line of thinking, you can pretty much guarantee they'll arrive at one of the, uh, one of the wrong answers that are there. So it really does test the, the students and get, get them thinking about their mathematics. So here's my plan of action. Um, I'm going to have a bank of those, well, this particular PowerPoint, available for, for teachers. Um, I think even though this is the junior maths challenge, and that's years 7 to 9, years 10 and 11 can benefit from doing these, um, and perhaps the middle and lower sets for, for year 10 to 11. Because as, as I've talked about on my blog and um, when I've been doing talks recently, the way that this new GCSE is shaping up is... And I know we say this all the time, but it's really going to challenge the kids and, and want them to be problem solvers and want them to be resilient and robust learners. And these kind of questions, which are a little bit out of context um, in the UK math challenge, I think are going to start appearing that kind of style in this new GCSE. So the more we can get our students ready for this, the better. So as I say, I'm going to have a bank of those in the, in the scheme of learning, perhaps some from the intermediate math challenge as well. And this is just a wonderful start, starting point to that. Teachers don't have to do a lot of planning. They can just have those ready and use them as and when they see fit. So thanks so much to Interactive Maths for, for uploading those. Incidentally, if you're interested in uh, our progress writing the schema learning and, and wondering which other resources from Tes Maths we use, I'll be blogging about this. Uh, so if you just go to my blog, so you either just go to my website, mrbartonmaths.com, and there's a link to it, or just Google Mr. Barton uh, Maths blog and, you, and you'll get to it. And you'll see um, I'm writing a series of posts about the, uh, how to start writing a scheme of, well, how we've started writing a scheme of learning. And hopefully, although the end seems a long way away, how we actually finish uh, writing it as well. 
So there we go, and I'll be back with another Scheme of Learning inspired resource next week. Take care. Bye for now.